Hello and welcome to this Android Adventure tutorial brought to you by North Border Software. My name is Gary and this is part 5 of the series of looking how to pinch, zoom and pan uh, in Android. Um, compared to the work we've done with the uh, panning, this is going to be actually very straightforward to do. Uh, it's mainly because the Android system has some uh, predefined classes to allow us to do pinch zooming. Uh, so we just call on that and just do some basic periphery code to actually make the gesture work. Uh, the class in question is actually the um, scale gesture detector class. So uh, uh, let's just get straight into the uh, coding. So the first thing I want to do is just create uh, a few new objects to allow us to do the pinch zoom. Okay, so let's just have a close look at these. So first of all, I'll just create an object of the uh, Scale Gesture Detector class, uh, which is uh, um, a member for Scale Detector. Um, then a set an initial scale factor um, equal to 1, the original size of the uh, image. And I've just set some static values for the minimum zoom and maximum zoom. So we're going to uh, be able to shrink the image to half its original size and zoom it in up to 5 times the uh, original uh, size of the image. So um, the next thing I want to do is um, just create, um, just just set the uh, scale detector and I need to just put some code in the um, context uh, and we'll just have a review of that code when I've actually got that in. So I'm just going down to the um, the context area here and all I want to do is uh, initialize the um, the member scale detector. So uh, let's just get the code in. Just re we'll review it then. Okay. So um, the reason I put it in the context um, here is that. Um, we can initialize the um, scale detector um, when we actually init uh, make an object of the class in the main activity. So uh, whenever I initialize pinch zoom plan in the main activity, it will execute any code that's uh, in this particular um, public uh, pinch zoom pan uh, context method here. So um, that's a useful thing to do and it's a good place to put it. Um, so I've created an object here and you'll see there's an error. Uh, what this is going to do, I'm going to just create an inner class um, one here for uh, called scale listener, and you can see it's just put it at the bottom here. And I'm just going to have to now implement some uh, methods. Um, it'll be the on scale method, so it'll say uh, implement methods, and I'm just looking for uh, on scale. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to just modify this as well um, because there is an easy way of doing things. Um, rather than using the this more sophisticated um, on-scale gesture listener, I'm going to use what we call the um, the simple on-scale gesture listener. Um, and what we need to do is just change a few things in the code here. So this is going to be uh, extend, and um, I'm going to change this to um, simple. Um, this would be a um, simple on scale uh, uh, gesture listener. Okay, and we just keep the, um, we'll keep the uh, on scale method in here because that's what we actually need. Um, but I'm just going to just return true at this point here. So um, that's kind of got uh, rid of those errors and got the framework uh, in place. So now I want to just go on, uh, before we finish this on scale method, I want to go on to the um, uh, the on touch method to do some modifications here. So the, th the first thing I want to do is actually let the uh, scale detector uh, inspect all the touch events. Uh, we'll just put a note into that. So uh, So I just want to say that the um, the scale gesture touch should uh, inspect all the touch events, and we we'll just put the code in to allow us to do that. It's quite straightforward. Uh, we we'll just call the on touch method. 
and we just want to put events uh, in there as a parameter. Okay, so and the other thing I want to do is just make sure that the move event event doesn't interpret a pinch gesture as a, a pan in event. So I just want to make sure that I only move the object if there is no um, scale um, scale detector in progress. So um, so just at this point here, let's just put a, an if statement in. And it'd be um, not uh, M scale detector uh, is in progress. And we'll execute the code there. And I just want to make sure I've got the uh, bracket at this point. Um, we'll just format that code. So the other thing I want to do is just make sure it doesn't actually redraw um, while there's a scale. Um, a scale, uh, sorry, scaling gesture in progress. So I'm just going to cut uh, the invalidate out and just place it um, in this point here. Okay, so um, that's the on touch taken care of. Um, so the only other code we need to do, apart from a slight modification to the on draw method, is to um, finish this scale on scale method here. So um, the first thing I want to do is actually just um, calculate the scaling factor based on the position of the uh, fingers on the screen. Um, so it's just a straightforward piece of code that does that. So uh, it'll be M um, scale factor and we want to make it equal to itself but multiply it by its new the new scale factor. So it'll be a scale gesture detector and what they need to do is just get the um, scale factor. So a very straightforward piece of code to allow us to um, do that. And what I do want to do is make sure um, I've got some decent limits in place. That's with the minimum and maximum zoom. So I'm just going to just put some notes in here. Uh, I don't um, want to let, let the uh, image get too large or small. Okay, so we can do that with, uh, again, just modifying the um, M scale factor. And we'll just do a few little bit of maths on it. So I'll pass it the uh, minimum zoom. And I'll be math again dot min and it'd be the um, scale factor and the maximum zoom I need to pass into here and it'd be uh, um, max zoom okay so that's just a standard line of code it just limits the uh, scaling of the uh, of the, uh, the 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 image itself um, of course, when we've done this, we want to invalidate the layout just to um, initiate the on-draw method and uh, show the image scaling on screen. So I'm just going to call um, invalidate at this point here. Okay, so um, we're actually nearly done. Um, the only other thing I need to do is actually just modify the on-draw uh, method. So um, we just need to put the ability really to scale the canvas um, in here, so um, it's quite straightforward. So it's um, canvas, and it'd be uh, the scale method, which we're calling out. And we just need to pass it um, the scale factor of it for the x and y directions. So it'd be scale factor, and it'd be uh, again just um, scale factor. Okay, so really that's all we need to do. I think it's just worth uh, a quick review of the code here. Uh, so I've actually just uh, accidentally shut down the uh, uh, the class itself. So let's just uh, pull that up. And we'll just uh, have a quick zoom in. Um, so I started off by just uh, defining a few objects here. First of all, there's an object of the uh, scale gesture detector class. And I set the initial scaling factor to the original size of the uh, image it's 
uh, itself and then I've set the minimum maximum zoom um, accordingly uh, I wanted to modify the um, on touch event to make sure that the uh, scale gesture detector um, got first view of the on touch event um, also down in the on view here uh, we needed to make sure that uh, we didn't redraw the canvas um, when we're doing a, a pinch gesture and having the code interpret that as a, a panning uh, movement so just put a uh, an if um, statement here to ensure that the uh, scale gesture detector is not in progress when we actually do the uh, redrawing for and recalculation for the panning. Um, so really it, it just then really comes down to um, this um, class which when we put the code in or initialize the object in the, uh, the context area it generated this class and this is really what we're using to actually scale the image um, so we actually had to implement the on scale uh, method here and we just calculate a new um, scale factor and then we just inhibit that scale factor to make sure it doesn't go below the uh, minimum maximum uh, zoom values and then we just invalidate the uh, layout to uh, draw that to redraw it on the on draw um, so that was the final piece of work we did was in the on draw itself where uh, we sorry we um, actually just scaled the image by the uh, the scale factor okay so um, that's actually good to uh, test I'll go back to the uh, emulator here um, and we'll just see the um, see the app running okay so the emulator is loaded and um, the app is is working so let's just uh, get a, um, an image um, we'll just pick this one here so you can see it's still uh, panning around so um, I don't know if you were to do a, a pinch zoom on the emulator you just need to hold the control key and then left click now you can see we're able to uh, zoom into that image I can just shrink that right down if I can it's not so easy to do on the uh, emulator so you can see that's uh, shrunk to below its uh, original size and we'll just zoom as much as we can and that's working there so uh, let's just get this down to a sensible size um, it may be that that is is all you really want um, but you also know that's quite a lot of white space around here so um, we may want to put some limits into the pan into uh, get rid of this white space around here so uh, uh, it's something I'll just cover in uh, one final part really uh, so part six we'll look at some of the techniques we can use to uh, uh, impose limits to the actual panning itself so uh, we'll finish this tutorial here for now so I uh, hope you found this one useful and uh, catch you in the, the next and final part thank you don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you find this tutorial useful. All the project files and source code are available for download on my website. Thank you.